Is whiskey dying out in 2024? Let's talk about it. What's up, everybody? It's Cy the Bourbon Guy, and welcome back to another whiskey video. Today, I'm kind of just talking about the whiskey boom, right? And how whiskey's impacted all types of things and how many people have been involved in it. And lately, I keep hearing this narrative that the whiskey boom's over, whiskey's dying out, all this stuff. And I think that I've seen enough of it. Normally, I kind of just ignore stuff like this, but it's one of those things that I feel like, yeah, somebody needs to speak up and say, no, <laughs> whiskey, whiskey world is not dying out. And whiskey, in my opinion, there's no better time to be a fan of whiskey than there is right now. But I think you have to be very specific. I think if you're talking about certain bottles, certain distilleries, certain things like that, I think, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of dying out. I think people are kind of getting tired of it. And for me personally, when you talk about all these bottles being allocated, there's nothing worse than there being a product and everybody telling you how good it is. And then you go to the store to go buy it and you can't find it and you drive all around. You pay all these crazy prices to get to it. I mean, you do all these things just to enjoy it. And by the time you're done with all this, so <laughs> sometimes you don't even enjoy it as much as you think you should. So I think, you know, on one hand, I understand all the arguments, you know, and I'll just call out Buffalo Trace. I mean, cause I, who else can we be talking about? <laughs> I mean, with all the products that they have, they are very good. Eagle Rare, some people can't even get regular Buffalo Trace in their area. Some people can't get Benchmark <laughs> in their area. You talk about all the E.H. Taylors, you talk about Eagle Rare, Blanton's, you talk about all these different Buffalo Trace products, in, especially all the Wellers. I mean, there's just, countless products that they have and i understand that you know okay trying to come up with a way to get that product more available get it out in front of more people but i don't genuinely feel like they are trying <laughs> to do this i mean there's plenty of blantons out there for sure let's clear that up but i mean in terms of weller when i look at weller you see foolproof you see 107 you see special reserve those three if you were to kind of focus in on that and try to make more of those products available to more and more people i think it would go a long way but what happens is create the perfect barrel and we, <laughs> and we want a single barrel which goes for even higher when you could get a foolproof single barrel or a 107 single barrel or a special reserve single barrel so i don't really understand the logic in creating a single barrel product that was already could be a single bear. I don't know. It, the whole thing is annoying. And then when you talk about all the different age tailors and all the gimmicks that are kind of behind some of those and the issues they had with Stag a few years ago and, and now that it's Stag and not Stag Jr. And I mean, there's just all these different things. And I think, you know, at least for myself, I don't want to speak for anybody else, but I'm, I'm just tired of it. I, there's no real reason to do that chasing unless you want those bottles in your collection. And I have some behind me that are Buffalo Trace products that are very good products <laughs> that over time, I've just happened to come across them or I knew somebody that came across it or whatever, whatever it is. And I have some of those bottles in my collection. I'm not saying that they're not worth being in my collection. But what I'm saying is the hoops that you have to jump through to get some of these and you still may not get it. It's just crazy. And I think at the same point, you have craft distilleries that maybe a few years ago rushed to the market, put out products that weren't that good, put out products that were too young. And for me, I always had like a craft note. It was like, I could tell. And I, sometimes it's like youth, sometimes it's the grain or whatever it may be, but you, you could tell it was craft. And I think now that has changed significantly. <laughs> there is craft distiller after craft distiller after craft distiller that is just killing it right now, knocking it out of the park. And there's some that aren't gonna make it, I feel like. I mean, I think at one point there's, whatever, I saw like over 2000 registered dis distilleries in the US right now, like that's a crazy number. And I'm sure we're not gonna be able to sustain that long term, but, the ones that are doing it right, the ones that are truly listening to their consumers and they are, you know, taking that feedback and adjusting their mash bills or adjusting how they age it or adjusting a blend or whatever it is that they're doing, but they're listening to the consumer, still keeping that vision in mind, but you're kind of adjusting your product along the way to being something that people are going to actually enjoy not just something that you're happy to slap a label on and that's it. I put a few different bottles up next to me that are just, in my opinion, killing it right now. Sagamore, amazing stuff right now. They're making some bourbons that people are <laughs> sourcing from them, you know, as well. And it's like, man, put out the Sagamore bourbon, you know, like I'm excited for that, you know, whatever the case is. The holiday, I 
talked about them plenty on this channel. I mean, just absolutely amazing things. Hard Truth is doing amazing things. So craft in general is killing it right now. And I'll definitely do a video of that coming up soon. <laughs> but when you look at other brands, I look at a brand like New Riff that is obviously <laughs> relatively new to the whiskey scene. But as I've done different blinds, I've blinded single barrels and they've won. I've blinded bottled and bond bourbons and they've won. I've blinded different single barrel rise and they've won, you know, so could be my palate. Could be that there's something about it that keeps drawing me to it. But either way, that that's telling me that here is a product that's on the market that I can find that's available, decent prices that I truly enjoy. Bar Sound Bourbon Company is next to me. That's another distillery that's just absolutely killing it right now. I've always been a fan of Maker's Mark. Their products are available and not only available everywhere, but also at a great price point. I've had people blind those against some Weller products and things like that and have beat those. So to me, it's one of those things of, and I'm not trying to bash Buffalo Trace. I'm not saying that. They do make good products. That's Buffalo Trace products really is what got me started in the, the whiskey world. Wasn't necessarily the first whiskey I ever had, but the but Buffalo Trace products made me truly appreciate this as a hobby and this as a profession for them and you know all those things. So not taking anything away from them, but I'm just pointing out that if if everybody else can seem to <laughs> get their products to the shelf one way or another, I mean just the the amount of hoops that not only we as consumers have to jump through, but stores have to jump through those same hoops to try to get some of that stuff. And then once they do get it, they're making their consumers jump through hoops. And I've stopped going to some stores because of the fact that they take advantage of customers and price gouge. And I don't think it's fair. If somebody's knowledgeable about a price of a whiskey and what it should be, and they choose to spend that type of money, great. But I've seen a lot of instances where people walk in and don't really know what it should be and they just see a Blanton sitting there. So when a Blanton's is $200, they don't know that they're getting taken. So that to me is not cool either. Point being, <laughs> out of my whole ramble, is that there are so many whiskeys right now and not even just straight bourbons. I mean, when you talk about finishing whiskey and all these different things that people are playing with on that end and experimenting, I reviewed the Chattanooga Whiskey White Port finish that I thought was absolutely amazing. Again, Hard Truth has some finishes that I thought were absolutely amazing. So the finishing in terms of food pairing and things like that, I feel like finishing is opening up a whole nother door for us because pairing bourbon, straight bourbon with food is doable, but it's harder, I think, because there's fewer nuances between bourbon to bourbon. So a Kentucky bourbon might be different from a bourbon out from the West Coast somewhere. Maybe, <laughs> but it's going to taste a little different. Definitely, we could say Texas is going to taste a little different, right? But but overall, that taste profile is still kind of hard to, you know, when you're talking about pairing with food and, and trying to match different things, if something is oaky or harsh, it's going to continue to be that way. When you finish it, it kind of opens itself up to more categories and more room to kind of play with when it comes to food pairings. And that's just been my own experiences. So when I go to a liquor store right now and I look at the whiskey shelf and I see a wall of whiskey, just <laughs> just every type of whiskey from every region of the U.S., you know, all these different finishes, finished in a wine barrel, double oaked, finished in this, finished in that, brandy finished, <laughs> I mean, whatever it is, all these different things that they're doing and just being so creative. I think that this boom has forced us to be creative because if you're coming to the market with the same product that's already been sitting there, it's not going to last. It's You're not going to be able to hold up. You're a brand that nobody really recognizes. Jim Beam has been around forever, right? So if Jim Beam puts out a product, people are going to relate to that. So I think in that case, you have to be unique. You have to bring something different to the table. And I think every, I don't say every, but a lot of whiskey companies have figured out how to do that. So much so that when I go to a store and I do see that wall of whiskey, and I'm talking with whoever's in the aisle, you know, they'll grab something and they're like, man, have you tried this? I, the first thing is I love their passion. I love how excited they are to tell me about whatever it is. And a lot of times I'll play dumb and just be like, oh, you know, is it any good? Or <laughs> maybe I've had it and maybe I don't like it, but I want them to continue to enjoy that experience. So a lot of the times I'll just be like, you know, you tell me about it basically. And they're telling me all about it. And sometimes they do tell me things that I don't know, you know, whatever the case is. So just the opportunity to look at a wall of whiskey and there are going to be things. It's mathematically makes sense, right? Like 
There's going to be some things on this wall of whiskey that I don't like. Sure. But for the most part, most of these whiskeys are good whiskey. The thing for me is, am I willing to pay that price? That's always the first piece. And then the second piece is, am I going to be willing to pay that price again and go back and get that same whiskey? Or am I going to come back and want to try something different? The story I've told a million different times, but when I first got into whiskey, I would go to this liquor store all the time and I just wanted to try something different every single time. That's what made me start social media was because my wife was like, you need to track this stuff somehow because you're, you're, gonna, you're never going to remember how much of this you had and what you drank and what you tried and what you didn't try. And so that's where I got started on Instagram. But I tried these different whiskeys. I tried, you know, every time I'd go into the store, I want to try this bottle, try that. Until one day I came across this bottle called Eagle Rare. And that made me stop in my tracks and say, what is this? <laughs> this is amazing. And then the next time I went back, I got another Eagle Rare. And the next time I went back, I got another Eagle Rare. And so maybe I tried some different things here and there. Uh, after that, obviously since then I've tried a ton of things, but it's just kind of one of those things that's at that point in my whiskey journey, that's what made me stop and say, this is different. This is something I want to keep going back to. So my question now to some of these brands is with all that's out there, you might be good enough for me to try it one time, but will I go back and buy it again as a creator, as a content creator, or whiskey tuber and all this other stuff. If I get sent a bottle and I'm on, here talking about it great am i going to go actually spend my money on that bottle or once that's gone am i going to go buy it myself and support you as a brand a lot of these people i see i see them hype it up when they get the bottle and i never see anything about it after that so i don't know it kind of always makes me wonder like i always say it's good enough for it once is it good enough for me to go back and buy it again that is the sign so if it is i think those brands that are good enough to kind of fit in that category They'll do just fine and they're going to continue to just excel and just fly through the roof. Again, all these brands next to me, I 100% I support. I think they're doing amazing things. There's a lot more brands that I didn't put next to me that are doing amazing things. But these are all bottles that when they're gone, I'm going to go find them again. So in terms of the whiskey boom, I think you have to be careful of how you word it. I think you need to be specific and say when it comes to allocations, when it comes to hunting all this stuff, when it comes to overpaying for things. I think people are just tired of it. And I think at the end of the day, people realize now that I don't need to do that. I can go into a liquor store, see something on the shelf for anywhere from $20. I could find you something amazing in the $20, $30 range. And I could also find you something amazing, a hundred plus. So depending on what your occasion is and what you're purchasing for and who you're purchasing for, there's absolutely plenty of opportunities to find great whiskey and I don't need to enter a raffle. I don't need to sit out all night long, you know, and pay crazy prices and get somebody to fly this over here and drive this over here and meet me here. And I mean, like, you know, it's, that's just my own opinion. Uh, I know everybody's got their own and, you know, but that's just for me personally. I just think that if the opportunity is there and you see certain bottles at retail prices, you see, you know, if that opportunity is there, sure. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying from a consumer standpoint, I look at it as there are so many other great options out there that I don't know how in the world we could say that the whiskey world is dying out when there's more options available now than there have ever been. And they are fantastic options. I gotta believe, I know in terms of certain whiskeys, People have gone back to prior years, maybe the 80s or 70s even, and tried that whiskey compared to the whiskey now, and that's better there. I understand that, but in terms of what is available and the wide range and the creativity of what's out there now, I don't know that we've ever seen anything like it in the whiskey world. So that's it. I'm off my soapbox. <laughs> that's, that's how I feel about this whole decline in the whiskey world. I think that certain areas of it, certain aspects of the whiskey world are going to decline. Sure. But I think there's so many other places where this, this thing is just going to skyrocket. So just my opinion, that's what it's all about. I appreciate you tuning in. Even if this was a little bit of a ramble, <laughs> a little bit of a you know, just kind of getting it off my chest, but that's what it's all about is taking you along with me on this bourbon journey and continuing to go along. So I appreciate you tuning in. Thank you so much for all of your support to this channel and to myself. I thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.